Welcome to the third installment of the Five Ways to Be a Better Programmer series. Part one and two of this series can be found on the video page of our channel or in the appropriate playlist. Please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any future content. Once you subscribe, hit the notification bell to receive any of the new videos we put up on the channel moving forward. You're not going to want to miss a thing. Today's video segment is stock model usage. First of all, what is a stock model? A stock model is a virtual representation of what we are cutting, what is left to cut, or what the job will look like after we cut it. That's not to say there are only three ways to use a stock model. Combined with the new mesh functionality in Mastercam 2022, there are many, many ways to use stock models to help you become more efficient. We will take a look at just a couple of those uses in today's video, primarily for rest machining, and toolpath targeting. So let's take a look at this computer mold core. We've got some 3D work, some 2D work. Typically the first thing I'll do with a job is an initial stock model if I know I'm going to be doing remachining and most jobs you do remachine. Well upon further inspection of this job I noticed a couple areas here. This outside flat area as well as this pocket and this pocket um, I can do with a 2D dynamic mill in one shot. The 2D dynamic mill doesn't recognize a stock model, so I really don't need that initial stock shape. Um, you might think that's counterintuitive doing a stock model video and saying that I don't need to do a stock model. But in this case, it took just a couple minutes for me to look at this part and realize that these flats are surrounded by air and will be perfect candidates to run the 2D dynamic mill against. So if I take a look at the tool paths, there's the first 2D dynamic mill. And if I come into the geometry, it was just simply selecting that machining region and defining an air region, which are the outside edges. And I get something that looks like that. So all of this blue area out here is air. And I don't have to concern with my cutter going straight down to that depth. There's nothing that it's going to hit. And the resulting toolpath looks something like that. And I do have the advanced display on. It just shows me the, uh, the cutting motion. If I turn that off, you can see the retracts that we get and the, the, the feed in and feed out. This is a cleaner look. And right now, I'm just concerned about the cutting motion. So I did another 2D high speed for the front pocket and one for the back pocket. Again, I'm not taking step downs. I'm getting all this stock removed in one pass. Uh, with a reasonable step over um, for that cutter. And once I do those, then I create a stock model. And this is what the stock looks like after those three tool paths. So you can see the area here in the middle where all this curved shape and 3D shape is that I really can't attack very efficiently with a 2D tool path is left solid. So to rough that area out, the best way to attack that is with an OptiRough. And that's what my OptiRough looks like. And you may think, okay, well, you just selected this geometry because this geometry was done. Well, that's actually not the case. If I go into the parameters and I look at my machining geometry, you can see there I've selected everything. The benefit to that is, is now Mastercam sees the entire part and it won't gouge the part because it sees the 3D model. Also what I've done in this OptiRough toolpath is I've activated my stock, I've selected one other operation and I've selected that stock model. The reason the OptiRough only cuts where it did is because it recognizes that that's the only place that I have stock because of that stock model. That makes this toolpath not only programming more efficiently, but machining more efficiently. In this example, I'd like to show you two more ways to use stock model. Toolpath targeting and repair. For targeting, I'm going to reference this high-speed pencil toolpath. 
And as you can see, this pencil toolpath cuts around the fillets that I want to, but it also cuts in other areas. I don't want the cutter to come out here. One of the ways I can control that is with targeting. So before I do the stock model, there's a few things I need to do. You see, I already have a level created for my pencil surfaces. So I am gonna activate that level. And now I'm gonna create those surfaces. To do that, I'm gonna select from solid. I'm gonna select those fillets. We'll say end selection and hit the green check mark. And as you can see, I now have surfaces on those fillets. To use those for a stock model, we'll go back into my ribbon bar and select stock model. My initial stock shape is gonna be model and I'm gonna select those surfaces. In addition to using those surfaces as my stock shape, I'm gonna puff those out by 0.2 millimeter, and I'm gonna change the color to blue to make it easier to see. And it takes just a second. And there's my reference I now have to cut against. Again, it gives me a virtual solid reference to machine against. So in the tool path, I can now target that stock model. Simply select stock, select trim to stock, one other operation, and select that stock model. Hit the green check mark and I'll recalculate that tool path and you'll see it goes exactly where I want. No more extra machining. Last, I want to talk about using stock model in a repair situation. On my levels tab, I have level four created, and there's a spline that I've created to signify an area of the part that had to be welded. Before I can use that area as a stock model, there's a few things I need to do. The first thing that I need to do is separate this solid face so I can select just the area inside and create a surface so I can then create a stock model. Before I do that, however, I wanna create a copy of my solid model. If I modify the existing solid model, all of my tool paths will go dirty because they're based on that solid model and I will have changed it. So I created a solid model on level five. I'm gonna modify that solid. To do that, I'm gonna select the model prep tab and split solid faces. I'm gonna select that wireframe and I'm gonna select that solid face. We'll hit the green check mark and I've modified that solid face. Now I wanna create a surface inside of that spline that I can puff out to signify my repair area. So again, I'm gonna go to surface from solid. I'm gonna select inside of my spline, select end selection and green check mark. Now that I've done that, I have a surface that I can select and create a stock model. So on my ribbon bar, I'm gonna select stock model. I'm gonna select model and I'm gonna select that surface and selection. And this one I'll puff out an additional three millimeters. Green check mark. And there is my weld. Now the best way to machine this area is to use the same tool path. I can take this tool path that I finished the part with originally or initially and copy it without changing any of the parameters other than stock model. I can create a tool path that will cut in just that repaired area. It takes just a few seconds to calculate. And there we go. My step overs 
my step downs, my speeds and feeds all come from the original toolpath. As you can see, if I overlay those toolpath, it matches perfectly. These were just a few ways to show you how to use MasterCam stock model function to machine and program more efficiently. Thank you very much for stopping in today. I hope you enjoyed the content. If so, please subscribe to the channel. Um, we will have some more videos coming soon, including part four, managing levels. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you.